What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered how to get authentic vintage halftone colors for your comics? Well that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen. I'm a media design educator. And today we're talking all about how to use the Color Lab brush set from Retro Supply. Now, I don't have any affiliation with Retro Supply. They don't sponsor the channel or give me anything for free or anything like that. But I do really like the products they put out because I love to create vintage design. And they provide really good brushes and textures and things like that for creating vintage design. So I've used quite a bit of their stuff and today we're talking about their Color Lab brush pack. Now I use this in Procreate primarily, but it's also available for Affinity and Photoshop and Illustrator. So no matter where you're designing, you're going to be able to use the Color Lab brush set. And it's the best set of vintage color halftones that I've ever found. And so that's why we're talking about today, but it can be a little confusing on how to use it. So this video is going to explain how to use those brushes to create the proper colors. Now this video is one video from my full course on coloring comics using the Color Lab brush set. So if you're interested in more about this topic, make sure that you check out the link for that class in the description below. That class is over on Skillshare along with all my other classes on different design topics. So let's jump in and start learning how these halftone brushes work and how to use them to build up your proper vintage colors. It's critical to follow the color chart that came with your brushes in order to get authentic halftone colors. Let me just swipe over to my photos here and you can see the Color Lab chart. Charts like this one were used by printers to reference the proper color that should go into a printed document. So we're going to use this to help us create the proper colors. This sheet works fairly simply. You just need to know that you have three colors of brushes and each brush comes in four different sizes. And then these all work as a matrix. So you have blues along the left. So blue, blue four, blue three, blue two, and no blue, you can see there. And it's important to understand that just the name blue, or red, just the name red, or yellow, just the name yellow, means the hue with no dots. So there's no dots involved, there's no white space involved in that pattern, it's just the straight hue. And then it goes back down to four, which is the most dense dot pattern, and then down to three, which has less dense dots, and then to two, which has the least dense dots, then of course you cannot use a brush in that color at all, in which case there is none of that hue incorporated at all. And so this can take a little bit to wrap your mind around, but once you do, it becomes fairly simple. So you can see that blue is along the left, red is along the top, and yellow is along the bottom. So each of these uses a different yellow brush, and then the matrix is made up of the blue and the red. Again, this can take a little bit to get your mind around, but once you do, it becomes really simple to use. And so once you've done it a couple times, it will start to make a whole lot more sense. So let's go ahead and just learn how some of this works. So in order to get started, I just built a little color wheel here for us, and we are going to color in different pieces of the color wheel so that we can understand it. We'll start with yellow because that's going to be super easy. If we go to our sheet, we find yellow, this one right here, and you can see that in the bottom corner of it, it just says Y. That means yellow, straight yellow. So let's go ahead and select that brush. We're going to go to our brushes. Make sure you're on RSCO Color Lab, find the yellow section, and choose the one that's just called yellow. Then go to your layers and make sure you are on the yellow layer. Then go to your color and make sure you select the yellow swatch from the RSCO Color Lab palette. Okay, let's close our palette and we are just going to color in a section of this color wheel with yellow. Remember, if there's imperfections, that's fine doesn't really matter because we are simulating a process that was very imperfect. So there's yellow. Now let's go over and let's find blue. So if we look in the first chart, we find blue, B by itself. That is the straightest form of blue we can get. You can see these aren't actually half tones because they didn't use dots when they wanted the straight color. So let's go ahead and go to blue brushes over here. Select blue, make sure you are on the blue layer. Go to your color and choose blue from the RSCO Color Lab palette. Let's go ahead and color in another slice of this wheel. Okay, you can see my brush was smaller that time, and so it took me a little bit longer. You can adjust the size of your brush by using the slider on your sidebar. Mine's on the right because I'm left-handed, but if you're right-handed, yours might be on the left. And you can slide that up and down to adjust the size of the brush. So you can get 
different amounts of coverage. Okay, now let's go back to our chart. For red, the red brush, if you look at it, where it's just red, so this is going to be in the first square, in the top right corner, just R, it's actually quite pink because it's actually laying down magenta ink. So we want to find something that is more red. And I really like the one in the third square that uses yellow three and straight red. So we're going to combine straight red with yellow three to get that red color for the red in our color wheel. We're not using the color wheel for anything in particular. It's just an easy exercise to start working with some of these colors. Obviously there's a lot more than six colors, but we're just going to work with some of them. So let's go ahead and start with straight red and you can see what that magenta looks like. So we'll go to red brush, switch to our red layer and switch to our red color swatch, which is actually magenta. And let's go ahead and color it in. I'm going to raise the size of my brush just to make this a little bit easier. Okay, again, that doesn't look very red, so we're going to go ahead and make it more red by adding in yellow three. So let's go to our brushes, scroll up to yellow three, switch in our layers to our yellow, and change our color to yellow. Raise up our brush size a little bit, and then lay this down. And now you can start to see the way that these colors combine to create different colors. So the yellow there helps to make it more reddish and less magenta. If you zoom in, you can see the yellow dots are where it looks most red because the yellow is overlapping with the magenta and almost creating an orangish color. But when you zoom out, the magenta that's showing through along with that orangish color shine through to create almost a red feeling. And remember, that's because this layer is set to multiply. Okay, let's go ahead and let's make a green. So when we get over here, we're just going to select what we think is kind of a vibrant green color. And I'm going to choose this one from the yellow four square, which uses yellow four and blue four. So there won't be any red involved in this. It'll be yellow four and blue four. So let's go ahead. We're already on our yellow layer, so let's just stick with yellow. And we're going to choose our yellow four brush. Make sure we're on the yellow layer using our yellow color. And let's make it a little bit bigger. You can see these are pattern brushes. So no matter which way you hold your pencil, it will continue to follow the pattern. And that keeps it from getting messed up. So now we've laid down yellow four, and now we need blue four. So let's switch to blue four. There's a lot of switching in this. Blue four, blue layer, blue color. It really gives you an appreciation for what people did with old printing techniques. So now as we lay this down, you'll start to see the green come through. And none of these colors are going to be perfect. That's kind of the point of these old printed halftones is they weren't perfect. There was a lot of imperfection in them and they were just creating colors in a pretty cheap way because that's what they needed to do. So if we zoom in on this, you can see where the blue, the yellow are, and where they're overlapping to create green and where they're not overlapping at all is white. And so that is how these halftones are built up. Next, let's go ahead and let's try and make an orange. So in looking for an orange, I am liking, in the one that uses straight yellow, I'm liking the yellow and R4 color, or maybe the yellow and R3 color. I think we'll try the yellow and R3 color. So that is using yellow and R3 and no blue, so it's in the top line there. So let's go over. We will go ahead and we will go to red, select red three, Make sure we're on our red layer and choose our red or magenta color. And we're just going to lay that down, increase the brush size a little bit. You can see increasing the brush size does not increase the size of the dots. It just increases the amount of dots that are laid down. Okay, and now we will go and we will switch to yellow, straight yellow on our yellow page with our yellow color swatch. And because that is a full color, there will not be any white dots left here. Okay, so now we have our orange color. And the further you are away from a half tone, the more it looks like the actual color that it's supposed to be. Okay, last thing we need to do is purple. Let's jump over here. We'll select a purple color from the second square. And purple can be a little bit hard because it's hard to create a straight purple color, but I think we're going to go with something that is purplish and it's kind of in the middle of the second square, yellow two. 
y2, r4, b3, y2, r4, b3. So this will give us a chance to see how three colors combine together. So let's start with yellow because we're already here. Yellow two, we're on the yellow layer using the yellow color. Make our brush a little bit bigger here. And let's lay it down. And you can see where we are overlapping here. I'm in a little trouble because our dots from our red color are overlapping, but that's okay. Imperfections are fine in this kind of work. Y2, and a lot of times I can't remember, so I'll just swipe back and I'll just check. Y2, R4, B3. Let's go to red four. And with half tones, you have to remember, it's not going to look right until you're done. You have to get the B3 in there or it's just not going to look like purple at all. Okay. And there you have it. We have completed our primary and secondary color wheel using these halftone colors. And you can see when we get further away, it looks better. And when we're closer, it doesn't look as good. But you can see the interaction of these dots. There's actually a lot of colors going on in this purple and only part of it is actually purple. But you can see there's blues and greens and yellows and reds in there. But when you're far away, it creates a purple effect. And so it's really important to always have this sheet for reference as you are making your colors because it's going to actually help you to know what colors are available to you using these brushes and which brushes you need to combine to get those colors. Now when you look at this, you will notice that they do have some trouble, especially with neutral colors. There aren't a lot of good grays here. There aren't a lot of good browns here. And so you just kind of have to play through it and realize that this is the limited medium that you're choosing to work in because you want to create that vintage feel and just choose the best color that you can for the art that you're trying to create. And if that's still confusing you, I would just take some time to just open up a blank document, set it up with the right color layers and then color on it to produce quite a number of these different colors. Because as you work with it, it will start to make more sense. It's really one of those things that it's a little bit counterintuitive to the way we're used to working as digital artists. And so it just takes a little bit of time, but as you work with it, you will start to get more and more comfortable with it. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like I said, this is one video from my class. So go ahead and check out that link in the description below if you wanna learn more about coloring comics using the Color Lab set from Retro Supply. And I'll also link to those brushes so that you can go ahead and pick those up if you don't have them already. Go ahead and drop in the comments. Let me know what brushes you like to use when you're creating comics and whether or not you've ever used the Color Lab brushes before. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.